Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on partial differential equations. And in particular we're going to look at second order linear problems with constant coefficients that feature purely second order derivatives. Now in previous videos we looked at the wave equation and we used a, a technique to solve the wave equation uh, known as the method of factoring. Okay, so just to refresh our memory, the wave equation in one spatial dimension is this, C is a constant, and we factored it down to two first order problems which we knew how to solve. And we discovered that the solution was of this form where f and g are arbitrary but differentiable functions. And you can see in the argument here we've got linear type expressions. Remember c is just a constant. So in this video we're going to tackle the slightly more general problem 6 and we're going to assume that a solution to 6 is also uh, a function of this type, this you know, similar linear form where m is a constant here, okay, to be determined. Okay, so this form is motivated by our work on the wave equation. If we take this form, compute the derivatives in six, then and set it equal to zero you'll get this expression here, okay, just by using the chain rule. Now, you can take out a common, a common factor of f double prime here, and you're left with the following. Okay, just a quadratic equation. Okay, so this, this equation here is sometimes called a characteristic equation. Now you might think, what, what happens to the f double prime? If, if f double prime equals zero, then you can integrate it twice and there'll be a special form of this already assumed form. So we don't need to worry about it. Okay, now we can solve this by you know, a number of ways. We can complete the square or we can use the quadratic formula or we can factor it. Okay, so m will be the following. And, you know, depending on what this discriminant is, you'll either have two real and unequal roots, two real and equal roots, or two complex roots. Okay? Now, if the discriminant is positive, then we obtain two real and unequal roots. And the form of our solution, the general solution, is this. Now, because there's two roots, this will be a solution, and this will be a solution for arbitrary but differentiable functions f and g. And the linearity of the PDE6 means that any, the sum of any two solutions is also a solution. So this is why we have two functions here. Now, in this case, where the discriminant is positive, we're going to refer to the PDE6 as hyperbolic. If the discriminant is negative, <clears throat> then we obtain two complex roots, and the form is the same as the form up here, except m1 and m2 will be complex numbers. And in this case, we refer to the PDE6 as an elliptic PDE. And finally, if the discriminant is zero, then we obtain two real and equal roots, a repeated root if you like, and the form is the following. So note I've got a got an extra um, x out here, okay? Um, in this case we term our pd6 as parabolic. Now if you want to justify each of these um, situations, what you can do is <coughs> factor the PDE, so that, just like we did with the wave equation, so we get um, uh, two first order PDEs and solve them. Okay, and you'll come up with each of these forms. 
Okay. Now, in some books, they don't assume a form of solution like this. They have the, the M on the Y. Okay, so let me speak about that for a little bit. Okay, it's very similar. If, if you ha assume a solution of this form, as some textbooks do, for some M to be determined, the only thing that really changes when you follow the previous working is that your characteristic equation is a little bit different. So instead of AM squared plus BM plus C, it's CM squared plus BM uh, plus A equals zero. Okay, so in that case, M will be this. Note that the discriminant hasn't changed, okay? It's just these two numbers here. And <clears throat> similarly to the previous case where we looked at F of MX plus Y, if the discriminant's positive, then we obtain two real and equal roots. We term the PD as hyperbolic. But the form of our solution based on this form is the following. So the, the, the roots then are coefficients of the y's. Okay? If the discriminant is negative, then we obtain two complex roots. And this is our form. And again, our PD is known as an elliptic PD. And finally, if the discriminant is zero, then we obtain two real and equal roots, and our PDE is termed parabolic. And just notice that the subtle change here. <coughs> We've got the coefficients on the M, or on the Y, sorry, and there's a Y out here now. Okay, so when it was mx plus y in here, the x was out the front, now it's y out the front, and the m's the coefficient of y here. Okay, let's do some um, examples. All right, classify and solve the following uh, PD with purely second order derivatives and constant coefficients. Okay, so here uh, A is 1, B would be positive 1, and C would be negative 2. So let's classify it first. So for this, we want to look at the, dis the discriminant B squared minus 4AC. Okay, so it's going to be 1 minus 4 times negative 2. Okay, so that's going to be um, 9. And that's positive. Okay, so it's the first case. Our PDE, let's call it star, is going to be hyperbolic. Okay, so let's actually go through and solve it. Now, I'm going to look for solutions uh, of, of this form, okay, or I guess of this form here where the uh, coefficient m is on the x, not the y. For solutions of the form um, u equals f mx plus y. The corresponding characteristic equation, so the characteristic equation is am squared plus bm plus c equals zero, and that will just be m squared plus m minus two equals zero. Okay, so we can factorize that. Uh, so that's going to factor down to m minus 1 times m plus 2. And so m will be uh, positive 1 or negative 2. Okay. So our roots are real and unequal. 
therefore our solution will be of this form as you would expect. with hyperbolic uh, PDE. Okay, so it doesn't matter where you put the M1 and the M2. And there we have our uh, general solution. Okay, so you can test to see whether you're right or not. Of course, you can take this and plug it, calculate all the partial derivatives, and plug it in there and see if the equation holds. Okay. Okay, so that's a, a, a general solution. Now, usually with these kinds of problems, you have some initial conditions or some boundary conditions. Uh, or a combination of both, and you can refine your functions f and g. Okay, well, if you decided to <clears throat> look for solutions in this form, you would have a slightly different characteristic equation. So instead of, instead of that, you would have negative 2m squared plus m plus 1 equals 0, and you would solve that. Okay? Now, you also can break this down to uh, two first order problems if you really want to be um, uh, quite precise and, and do it f you know, uh, from a um, very um, well founded and um, uh, analytic point of view. So l let me give you an example of how that works. So alternatively, if you wanted to, to, to break it down, you can write the following as this. So you can break up this into 1 times that minus, oh, sorry, negative 1 times that plus 2 times that, okay? So, okay, so how can you um, uh, simplify this? Well, you can group this, these terms together and take out a common factor of the sub x derivative and you can group these together and take out a common factor of the y derivative and then you let that for example be v so whatever's in the bracket be v and that be v okay so you see you have the same thing here and here so this is a, f you know, setting this all equal to zero, you've got a first order PD, which you know how to solve. Okay, so you solve that, it's a transport equation, you solve that, you, you let V equal that, and there are your two first order PDEs. Okay, so that's the very precise way of doing it, but it takes a bit longer to do. Okay, this is very direct, very quick. Okay, let's do another example. Here we've got Laplace's equation. We're asked to uh, solve and classify it. So here, there's no, um, well the mixed derivative term is 0, so b squared minus 4ac is going to be 0 minus 4 times 1, times 1, which is negative. So our PDE is elliptic. Okay, so now in this case I'm going to search for uh, solutions in the following form. Okay, where m is a constant to be um, determined. So the associated characteristic equation is cm squared 
plus BM plus C equals, uh, sorry, plus A equals zero. So in our situation, it would be M squared plus one equals zero. So you can see we're going to have complex roots as we would expect. So in this situation, this will be the form of our solution. So the roots are complex. And there we have the general solution to Laplace's equation. And again, you can check by differentiation to show that that really does satisfy Laplace's equation. Okay, let's do one more example. Here we've got the following second order uh, partial differential equation. Let's classify it first. Okay, b squared is 16, 4ac is 4 times 1 times 4, so it's 0, so our PD is parabolic, let's look for solutions in the form, say, u equals f of mx plus y. The characteristic equation is going to be m squared plus bm plus c equals zero, which is just m squared minus 4m plus 4 equals zero, so that's a perfect square. So we're going to get a repeated root, and they give the following uh, form of solution. Okay, so in this case it's going to be f of 2x plus y plus x times g of 2x plus y. Okay, so here's your solution to this problem. So that, that's a th uh, three basic problems from the second order PDEs. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I hope you found it useful. Please join me for more presentations in the future.